Lekken Greg Vegan Camp, the 31st of May 2019. We welcome the rain. Here you can see a papaya that has been cut there where there was an incision and it rooted. So we could cut off the top because we don't want a big top here. We want a small papaya and we can replant the top and we can have a small papaya here who just grow and produce fruit. You probably can't see it but it's raining right now and it's still mango season. But as you can see the longans are coming. Not so many on the branches. The new thing here is all the longans were used to be sprayed with the fertilizer on the leaves but now they're not being sprayed. So now they, the trees probably need to adjust from the heavy harvesting and not produce so much fruit even though there is like plenty for eating at least. This longan near the kitchen, near the bathroom has a lot of longan. It has never produced longan before or at least never as long as I've been here. It's ready to produce a lot of longan and it, the longans are big and there's a lot of them compared to just the next tree over here that usually has been induced um, with flowering and also being sprayed with the uh, non-organic fertilizer in the past. They don't really produce now. They probably need to adjust the few longans there are. There's like almost nothing. For me this is a very exciting experiment that you can see that there are like a few longans and I would I would love to just keep it this way and see if uh, we'll produce more next year or what will happen two pineapples here that are not completely ripe yet this one is really really nice it's already I think it's almost pickable but I just want to keep it a little bit more so it gets really orangey and super sweet I don't know when to harvest it I don't want the bugs to eat it any either so if you're an organic pineapple grower please let me know when to pick these uh, for optimal ripeness and without the risk of too many bugs for example bananas I always pick bananas when the first ones get yellow that's that's when I pick bananas I don't or I need to put a net around them so the bugs can't go in then you can actually hang them for a long time the problem with bananas also if you put a net or something like that will capture moisture some of the bananas might go bad inside the net and sometimes you won't see it and that will damage a lot of bananas so it's not really easy to to prevent like bugs going in and keeping keeping everything nice uh, unless you take it in in a non moist area under a roof or you hang it in a net then it will ripen up completely the bananas that's the that's the way you get the most bananas to eat and they are like very tasty because they ripen almost fully on the palm usually when you buy bananas in the west they're picked way under ripe and they are transported long destinations here when you pick them like when they the first ones get yellow then it's like not it doesn't take long before everything is yellow and and they're ready to eat or freeze because when you have like a whole bunch of bananas it's not always you can uh, eat them all before they go bad but it's also good compost these are some of the jackfruit little bit uh, jackfruit nursery jackfruit forest uh, it's just near the this is the bathroom in here and and these just need to be replanted somewhere I'm just waiting for a bit more rain there are papaya sneaking in everywhere and as you can see we have a lot of mango rain kicks in uh, the production of papaya is just insane especially from the huge trees these are just huge. That one is already rotting on the tree. Casper is not keeping up with the, the harvest of these. They have too much fruit. Peppermint garden. Bamboo shoots like these are edible from the sweet bamboo. Really nice in curries. Finished growing some of these sunflower sprouts. A little bit of date nursery, date palms. Jackfruit nursery, orange jackfruit nursery coming up. Red roses and the mosquito net is up, mosquitoes are coming, 
rainy season. One of the good things is also that we installed like these sheets that we can roll up and down and they're really good at, during the storms and rainy season. Otherwise the whole terrace is getting wet. This is the top of the other papaya I showed that we cut off. It had roots so now it's growing quite well. It has a very thick stem compared to how how small it is and yeah it was already fruiting but you can see that the, the, the fruit I don't know if that was the fruit but it's uh, it's quite nice to see that you can just cut off a part of a papaya and just regrow it if you want to grow a lot of papaya it's a nice way to do it probably and also there is logic in like if the papayas get too tall it's ha harder to harvest the fruit so it might be nice to have like some short papaya trees with good roots but otherwise you need ladders or you need long sticks and then you need to grab them sometimes it's hard to grab them I don't know what I'll do when I get old maybe I'm not able to grab them when I'm like 98 I'm just with a stick and like four, a five meter stick and just like grabbing papayas falling down like grenades mulberries are coming Really tasty. This cassava, this, this cassava, this is like huge. It almost fell down during uh, the rain last time. But now it's supported by multiple bamboos and also the giant passion fruit is trying to grow on it. Casper is still dwelling inside the hut. Chicken running around and still destroying everything. Very, very dry period. Now the bananas are coming again because the rain is coming, as you can hear. Completely different type of mango. And these two beams fell down during a, a rainfall storm. And I mean, these are huge. They were falling down the, the long entry and over to the bathroom. So it was a little bit uh, sketchy to handle this. I'm happy that Casper was here to help out. But what I need to do is I'll probably cut these up in three meter beams and then put it in a dry spot. But you can see, normally this is completely green as on the other sides, but when the sun starts to dry it out, it turns brownish, yellow brownish. That's what we want, we want it to dry out so the bugs won't eat them. If it's, if it's wet and juicy, it's very nice for the bugs to go in and eat it. And if the, the bugs start eating it, the best way probably is to burn the surface of the bamboo. The bamboo bathroom door has been like burnt. That's the only thing I've done to it. And it's like, it's, it's really good. If you have a blowtorch or a big fire, you can just surface burn your wood. And it's really, really, really the, one of the best ways to preserve wood, I, I guess. If you, if you want to avoid any salts or chemicals, salt is a chemical. These organic places that use sea salt, sea salt is also a chemical, right? Everybody is using chemicals, even the organic farms. and So it's, it's a little bit funny with this whole organic thing, but I agree we should weigh that nature puts stuff. I think it's the easiest way. And when the plants are used to get the nutrients from the natural source, I think they will produce very well plants are just producing like crazy they just need some water and some rain and just be used to the natural environment and the, everything goes it's so easy it's so the ma if you keep the maintenance and the cost very low then you don't need a lot of yield if your cost is zero then everything is just a plus on the other side more sweet bamboo growing for bamboo shoots Yeah, this is also an example of a jackfruit tree that lost all the leaves but and and you think the tree is dead but no it starts shooting again when when the rain comes much bigger mulberry i don't know if i should like cut off these I, i'm not sure they are like growing very well banana compost very densely packed pineapples add on to the storage the outdoor storage where we can have all the garden tools and like a garden shed not completely finished yet but uh, yeah and i fixed also the table bought some power tools so it's easier to work with on battery now every three days i go out and i check the mangoes there are like a lot of mangoes that will are tree dropped 
but that's not always very good because they might be overripe. I've changed the concept of how I will I do things. I don't want to touch the mangoes too much because I, I realize that they're quite sensitive so like touching them every other day or every day will give them like marks and it's they will, won't ripen up very nicely. So the new concept is to go out every three days and pick everything that is like ready to pick. And when it's ready to pick, that means that it's sometimes you can even just go in and just like pull it a bit or just like flex it a bit, then it's ready to pick. Otherwise gently touch it in the bottom of the mango. If it's not stone hard, if it's just like, okay, I feel I, it's just like budging a bit, then it's probably ready. And then you can just open it. And when you open it and it is like already yellow on the bottom, it's ready to pick. And either you can break it in the top or you can just, it's very, it should be very easy when the mango is ready to be picked, then you just flex it like that and it should go off the tree. When it's not ready, you cannot just like get it off like that. Neighbors getting ready with their plows, turning the soil and getting ready to plant corn, starchy corn for the starch factories. So when the rain comes, we plant pumpkin, winter squash, in the mango area. So among the mango trees we have a lot of new sprouting pumpkins. So they will be ready in uh, October, November or something like that. The amount of pumpkin really depends on how much rain we get and that's actually it. <laughs> how much rain we get is uh, some seasons we get a li very little rain and that makes a little only little harvest of uh, pumpkin because they don't really produce much so if we got, get enough rain we get enough pumpkin and I've been experimenting of like leaving mangoes without banks but it's a really bad idea um, they get eaten by bugs they crack it's uh, not so good by leaving the mangoes a long time on the trees you need to be prepared to lose a lot of mangoes because somehow the bugs get inside the bags anyway and there are some mangoes that need to go into the earth and be uh, compost that's how it is we have bananas coming up and I just enjoy planting cassava everywhere because cassava will just have these roots that you can eat in an emergency, emergency situation and also you you have these um, shoots coming up and they're like super soft so you can actually just break it break them off and then you have like something like this and then you can either steam them or put them in your curry or just like salt or like like just put them in a, on a pan or a wok and then just uh, put in a, a some Mango sauce, mango jam, we have a lot of mango jam, so our mango sauce and then you just put it in there with the mango sauce and a little bit of uh, seasoning and then you have a lovely dish for your, together with your rice or whatever grain you enjoy to eat. One of the great benefits of rainy season is the clear air, it's so nice. Look at the mountains. Cassava is so easy to plant. You just cut it up, just put it in the soil, and it will just grow. It's insane. And with cassava, you don't need to worry about um, dry or rain or whatever. You just, it's just so, uh, it's just so hardcore of a plant. The only thing is that it's just much, much easier to plant around here when it's rainy season because the soil uh, gets softer. I mean, we. This area is just like on a slope, so it's just like super dry. All the water just, I don't know, it just disappears into the soil. But after heavy rain, it's, the, the soil is so, I mean, it's so hard in the dry season that nobody could expect it to be soft or whatever. But it actually gets soft, which is like insane. This is how like a harvest looks like. Pumpkin sprouts are doing quite well. Before we had a jackfruit losing all the leaves. And here is the avocado losing all the leaves. We have avocados that all have leaves all the time because they're like near water. 
but this one is like in a super dry area the resources are very limited but it survives the rain has come and it's like shooting again this reminds me also that sometimes when the resources are low you need to slow down lose all your leaves and go in a slow mode and then when the resources come back the rain then you can go out and show your your greenness your beauty so I think that many people are just like running themselves down, not remembering to sometimes just rest, lose the leaves, go into a deep sleep, rest enough, and then when everything is okay, you can come back to life and, and do whatever you want to do. But resting, don't, not overdoing it, is just like something we can learn from plants. Plants are like incredible to handle stressful situations. Humans just break down and some, so something like this is too stressful just just completely use all random stuff like medicines, pills, coffee, you name it, drugs, all kinds of things that you shouldn't do. Instead of just like okay I can't handle this, I need to sleep more or something, I need to rest more. People just like get stressed, drink more coffee, just overdo it and some people die. And that's sad. You should just like learn from nature, learn from plants. I'm not sure if Lek is experimenting with the mushrooms here, but uh, I see mushrooms popping up around the mango trees all around here. This is like a brown one, I don't know. He's and here we have pumpkin that is like way way older all this is pumpkin the only reason why is because we have like sprinklers water sprinkles during the dry season so they can start growing pre-season and here we might get a lot of pumpkin we have like flowers going on I don't know if they're male or female in that hut in the background here we had a mango man sleeping jazz the mango man he came here just to eat mango he was here like two days just just to eat mango and then he left because he had already planned it's just amazing to see people come here just to eat mango more long gun yeah it's it's very fun to see that these like low producing small trees they're adapting much faster than the largest trees to not being induced and not being getting the leaf fertilizer on. Young minds of the young trees are strong minds. And a new gate into the front because like if you come here and the gate is closed you're welcome to come in but we just have it here because sometimes there are like dogs running around directly attacking the dog that is under protection of the vegan camp, Hima. And they just come in like a pack of dogs, three or two or three dogs, and just try to attack him. It's so horrible. So it's nice to have a gate. And thanks to Casper, because he helped with creating it. Papaya here. And they're already producing flowers, so there will be papaya soon here. And more good bananas coming up. The asparagus. So you're more than welcome to come and eat some mangoes. Also we have frozen mangoes, frozen bananas. We do make delicious, delicious um, vegan ice cream, nice cream. When they're chicken, they're turning the soil every, like turning the mulch. So if even if you put mulch in, a durian, durian tree. If you try to mulch everything, then the chicken go around and turn it all around. One of the first jackfruit trees I've planted. It's nice to see things grow. This is the largest date palm on the property. I actually don't know which tree this is, what this is. It seems that it needs some support. And a quick tip is that if you have a lot of banana palms and they produce a lot of banana leaves, obviously, and when you then you have a lot of mulch, but you also have a lot of this um, fibery stuff and you can actually like cut it up and you can use this as string so you can you have this and you have a like a bamboo stick and then you can tie the tree uh, to the bamboo with this natural product it's actually really really strong you'll be surprised how strong this is 
when it's completely dry and has been wet and dry and wet and dry it's like it's very hard to break i'm 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 amazed about this i this is i prefer to use the, this than the the bamboo strings that they make here uh, locally this is really strong it's amazing you can probably make clothes out of this so if you can make clothes out of the, out of this and you want to come please come and make clothes out of this this would that would be epic so I used a combination of old cassava and bamboo because we have so much cassava growing that we need to like harvest some of it and we have a lot of sticks that we can use as like supports and stuff like that so cassava is really nice also in that that regard and then I use the banana leaf string here to tie it all together it's really 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 strong and easy to do this little nice thing over here is um, lime a special type of lime it's a caviar lime because it looks like small eggs inside the lime and actually like you can see this is cassava and like use the cassava to support the lime here uh, apparently but it's now it starts growing and i don't think she wants a cassava to grow here because the primary plant here is is the lime i've been making also a lot of green smoothies with with this uh, watercress it's really nice in, in smoothies and it's like a really easy growing plant just so hardcore also and it's like one of the old types there are many ways of harvesting these but you can like you can take and break uh, one thing and then you can take off the leaves and then you can just like put it in the soil and it just grows again it's completely completely crazy um, fresh chom I just love it galanga flowers They're so beautiful you can steam them and you can eat them but they are like very potent Casper my brother he took a whole thing and put it in his mouth he'd never tasted it before don't do that don't put something in your mouth like a huge amount of something into your mouth if you've never tasted it before it's a bad idea so many cool things going on when the rain starts and also the 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 Thai apple thing oh my god it's already it's already dying what's going on is it ripe ready to eat wow box already eating one maybe also the next one. Oh my god I need to check these I've been looking forward to this for a very long time Thai apples it doesn't really look good I mean it's a young tree I don't think these uh, maybe the production is not going well right now it needs to adjust maybe in a couple of years we will have something we can eat but right now all the bugs are in it this is our like the best longan tree the biggest also with the most access to water there's a lot of longan with access to water a lot of longan here you can also see what chicken do they have like a, we have like a mulched area and then you see like a spot where they just like scratched everything out look at this bamboo shooting in the wrong direction into the soil hopefully one day we'll have a lot of dragon fruit pea flowers growing and we will probably need to take care of the cables going into the house because the passion fruit is crawling up on it again we already removed it one time a couple of months ago or so 